Hello and welcome to the Audible, the quarterback analysis podcast for the wild card round. I'm Big Italy 42. He's Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11. And unlike running back, there are actually some viable options at quarterback this week. And we're going to get into a couple of them here. And obviously a few off the wall. Can't be too off the wall on obviously a four game slate. But there are some chalk plays though. So definitely a couple ways you can differentiate. Russell Wilson starting off with cash game plays. Obviously, Russell Wilson is kind of the epitome of a cash game play. The the mini Cam Newton, I guess you would say, as far as size goes at least. Uh, he gets rushing touchdowns. He gets rushing yards. He's efficient down the field. And somehow, with the receiving core he has, he's been very, very good and had upside as well. Getting Marshawn Lynch back this week, but you know the drill with Marshawn Lynch. Nobody really knows what his workload's going to be. They got all these extra running backs now, all of whom are still on the roster as far as I know as of this morning. So... Who knows how much he's going to see, but you should see a good amount of balance from this offense. And when teams like Minnesota are going to have to respect the run, Russell Wilson should have plenty of time to throw the ball. Yeah, I mean, he's your safest option this week. If you're playing cash games, I mean, go ahead and plug Wilson in there. Um, Yeah, he's, you know, your more expensive quarterback, but he's definitely going to be worth it. Um, Just because he gets you those few extra rushing yards kind of adds to that floor he has. And, um, you know, the matchup against Minnesota is not... It's not good, but it's not bad either. Um, yeah, they rank as the 11th best defense per football outsiders, but he thrashed them for 274 and three passing touchdowns earlier earlier this season. Also tacked on 51 rushing yards and a touchdown. Um, I mean, the guys, he ended the season hot. Uh, three or more touchdowns in six of the last seven games, so he's just your safe option. Um, you know, you can definitely toss him in GPPs as well, but I think he's going to be the probably the most popular play on the board this week. Yeah, I would imagine so. And a guy who's also going to be pretty popular because... He's been playing well, and the team he's facing, quite honestly, has not been playing well. Kirk Cousins for the Washington Redskins. Seen a little bit of line movement on this one. We saw the Redskins were favored. Now some places Green Bay's favored. But either way, still pretty close to a pick And Cousins, especially at home, has been great this season. And this is the Packers defense that really has been the strength of their team, I guess you would say, because the offense has been so sluggish. But the problem with the defense is that the offense has not been able to stay on the field, really, for any substantial amount of time recently. So... Got to imagine defense going to be tired. And while Washington just doesn't have a consistently balanced attack, Cousins just continues to produce. And you got to imagine on Green Bay's end, they're going to have to target Jordan Reed and try to take him out of this game and open up opportunities for the other people. Because obviously Kirk Cousins' success a lot of times kind of predicated on Jordan Reed being successful. Yeah, and you're going to have to see guys like Deshaun Jackson, Pierre Garçon, and even Jamison Crowder kind of step up. Um I mean, Cousins is I mean, kind of your value play this week. Um, going to be a safe cash game option. Probably going to toss two touchdowns, but he does have upside as well. Um, and you can pair him with kind of whoever you want there for pretty cheap. And um, I mean, Green Bay's been good against the pass this season, but it's not going to fend me off Cousins. Um, Vegas has them as uh, the second highest team total on the slate behind Pittsburgh. So, I mean, Cousins, he's fin- finished with the fifth highest passer rating this season. Uh, he has the highest completion percentage on the year. And uh, like you mentioned earlier, the... The, the splits at home have just been insane. Um, he, he's averaged about seven more fantasy points per game at home. So um, they're in Washington at this price. I think you got to look at Cousins as being a, a nice value option in your cash games. Yeah, absolutely. Aaron Rodgers now on the other side of that one. And this one, by name itself, is probably going to get him a decent amount of ownership this week. And that's not to say that Aaron Rodgers is a bad quarterback. I've seen some stupid comparisons, people saying, who would you rather have, Aaron Rodgers or Kirk Cousins? And I mean, don't be that idiot that says things like that. Clearly, still, Kirk Cousins. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hanging up the phone right now. Where's, where's the stop button? But <laughs> either way, I mean, it's still Aaron Rodgers. His offensive line has been horrible. His receivers have been inconsistent. Obviously, he's missing his best receiver. And Jordy Nelson, sorry, Randall Cobb. Um, offense, I did mean offense with that one because, I mean, Jordy Nelson is the better receiver. But obviously, he's not here. Not going to be playing in the playoffs either. Uh, so... He's going to have to be able to make plays, and a lot of that's probably going to have to come in the short passing game because that offensive line just has not been able to protect him at all this year. So Aaron Rodgers, though, we've seen him in bad situations make incredible plays, especially in the playoffs. So if you're making multiple lineups, as much as I don't have faith in this Packers offense at all right now, I still would want to have myself some shares of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I mean, because Aaron Rodgers is so good, you kind of – I mean, he, he's a guy who can rally an offense that's been awful all year and make do with a bad line. He's just that good because he's mobile. Um, I mean, hopefully the wide receivers can actually catch the ball this week. That's been a big problem this year. Um, but Washington, I mean, Rodgers has a great matchup. Um, 
Washington ranks 25th in passing yards allowed per game. They've allowed 22.7 points per game this season. And Packers are a cheap stack. I mean, you can get James Jones. probably going to be the most popular wideout, I would say, outside of maybe A.J. Green and Antonio Brown this week. But he's super cheap, and he's been the only viable option you'd want to take in this receiving core. And um, because Randall Cobb's been so, so bad this season, I mean, he's really cheap. So I think, I mean, looking at this, the matchup's great. If the line can protect Rodgers and this game actually turns out to be a shootout, which it very well could be. If Kirk Cousins gets hot, um, Rodgers is def- definitely going to have to keep up. Yeah, absolutely. Next guy up, excuse me, is definitely going to be rival- rivaling for the top spot as far as ownership goes, I would yeah. imagine. Ben Roethlisberger for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I'm going to let you take the lead on this one because I'm obviously a Bengals fan, and while stats are hard to ignore, I'm, I'm of the belief that the Bengals can – Keep Roethlisberger from hitting value. Certainly not going to stop him and certainly not going to hold him to 200 yards and no touchdowns, anything crazy like that. But he is the most expensive quarterback some places, so I just don't think he's going to have a huge game. No, and no, I, I agree with you. I mean, that's that's the risk here. I mean, you know, the matchups, it's bad. It's not a good matchup. But if you look at the volume he's going to have, he's probably going to throw the ball 45-plus times this week. I mean, especially if D'Angelo Williams doesn't go, which is likely the case. And um, I mean, Cincinnati, they have they rank 20th in the league um, in allowing passing yards, which Roethlisberger is probably going to rack up plenty of passing yards this week, but they don't allow touchdowns. They've allowed um, an average of 16.3 points per game, as we have seen with Pittsburgh this season coming in. Um, I mean, two of Antonio Brown's worst games this season came against Cincinnati, which kind of relays to uh, Ben Roethlisberger. But I know, I mean, volume-wise and the possibility of the deep threat with Martavis Bryant, with Antonio Brown, um, Tough matchup, but I mean they can't get it done. But it is it is a risky play. Yeah. I'm not going overboard with Big Ben and, and company this week, but they do need to be mentioned. Yeah, um, due to my Bengals pride, I'm an all out fade on Roethlisberger this week, <laughs> but I have to be. But um, just a couple extra numbers, just to just for my Bengals. Um, Adam Jones has not allowed a reception of 25 or more yards all season, and Roethlisberger has one touchdown and four picks against the Bengals. Next, that's, um, that's what you're, you're uh, Kermit the Frog, and you just gotta yeah. <laughs> I don't drink tea, but uh, if I can put coffee in that cup, I'll, I'll drink my coffee with that. <laughs> um, either way, AJ McCarron next up. Obviously, no indication, no official word that Andy Dalton's out, but Andy Dalton's out. Let's be honest about that. He's not playing. Marvin Lewis kind of trying to, I don't know, play some weird angle and not give official information, but there's no way that they're going to prep McCarron to play this game as the one guy that's completely healthy and then not let him start. So just, just be real about this. Andy Dalton is not going to start. And, I mean, it would take an injury or some kind of crazy miracle for him to see the field at all. So, um, it's going to be A.J. McCarron. And aside from two interceptions, um, one of which was a pick six against the Steelers last time out. And in all reality, yes, the ball was thrown late, but I don't think it was his fault. Wide receiver kind of gave up on the play. Either way, he made those two bad plays. But in around three quarters of action at 280 yards and two touchdowns. So, this is a guy who still has one of the best deep threats in all of football and a guy who has had huge success against the Steelers, talking about A.J. Green, of course. And the Steelers don't have an answer for A.J. Green. They never have. So the Bengals, with Andy Dalton under center, it's been get the ball to A.J. Green if you want to have a chance. Obviously, Tyler Eifert's going to be back for this one as well. So plenty of options, and McCarron's going to be put in that spot of let everyone else make the plays, just don't make mistakes. Yeah, and I think you're kind of going to see what happened in Denver, um, where he's kind of he managed the game well. Um, just had an unfortunate change of events in that later later half there. But, um, I mean, he hasn't thrown any picks since the Pittsburgh game, um, which is understandable coming into a rookie quarterback, coming into a situation you're jumpy, um, you haven't seen the field all season, so it's understandable. But he's been great since then and definitely capable of putting up points. And he's kind of your alternative, your GPP alternative to Kirk Cousins at a similar price who's a bit cheaper. And I don't think people are going to be on him. Um, Pittsburgh, I mean, this is probably, outside of Washington, the best matchup for a quarterback. Um, you know, they rank 30th in passing yards allowed per game, rank 19th in passing touchdowns allowed, and they've allowed a 90.9 passer rating. So, um, I mean, you can easily pair up McCarron with A.J. Green. Like you mentioned, he's torched the Steelers this season and in the past, and Tyler Eifert back this week, great red zone targets. So, um, with their lack of run game, I think their lack of run game in both the, both these teams, um, you should see plenty of passing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and... 
certainly could see a ton of uh, scoring as well with between these two teams. So, uh, going to be an exciting one for me, Christmas in January, hopefully. Uh, but <laughs> we, we know what, what's destined to probably happen either way. But um, either way, thanks for hanging out with us here. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the rest of our content at DailyFantasyCafe.com.